Hello, and welcome to my online Christmas card class. I'm Connie Douglas, and this is the second in a series of three. So hopefully uh, you had a chance to join me for the first one or watch the replay. I don't know what keeps happening. Okay. Uh, I think I'm set up other than I have some funky uh, echoing going on because I have another device set up so that I can stream this and you know me and technology, it's not always a good thing, but I'm trying. Some things are getting a little bit better. I keep learning as I go and uh, I am hope, hope that you're learning as you go as far as crafting. I hope I give you some ideas to inspire you and uh, some cards that you enjoy making. So. Uh, today we are going to make four more cards. We will use the uh, gingerbread and peppermint sweet again. That's the one that I used the last time. We'll be using that again today. And uh, I've also added in the perfectly plaid stamp set along with the pine tree punch. So changing things up just a little bit for a couple of the cards today. And I hope you like that. Perhaps uh, the perfectly plaid and pine tree punch are something that you already have in your stash uh, because they were available last year and they're in the annual catalog again this year. So they might be something you have already and you can craft right along with me. The class today is uh, available to you as a kit. I will cut and prepare all the paper pieces. I will punch and die cut the pieces uh, and you can have it all for free with a $35 order from my online store. And to do that, uh, you can just follow the link that I will put on here after we finish this. And I would ask that you use this host code and then I will know that you are looking for the kit from today's online class. So today is Tuesday and I will uh, take orders for this kit via my online store using that host code until this coming Sunday. And then the kits will be shipped out by Monday at the latest. So if you'd like a free kit sent directly to you at your home, uh, all you have to do is place an order in my online store using this host code. And as I mentioned, there will be a link to that that I will put in this post afterwards. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's get started here. Just need to figure out, here we go. Nope, I want uh, this one. And I want to spotlight that so that you can see what we are doing. Okay, this is the first card that we are going to make today. And again, we are using the uh, peppermint, gingerbread and peppermint memories and more cards. We used one of those last time for one of the cards and we're going to use another one today. This one says it's beginning to taste a lot like Christmas. Mm. Oh my, <laughs> I have been reading some uh, <laughs> some Christmas magazines and things and there are some yummy recipes out there and all sorts of goodies that we are uh, bombarded with at this time of year. So uh, it's, it is beginning to taste a lot like Christmas. So set that aside. I have a real red card base. It is just a standard card base, uh, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. I'm just going to give that a nice uh, crease with my bone folder. And then I have a piece of the gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper. So I will just attach this. This is the, the lid for this is clear and sometimes I go to use it and I don't even realize that the lid is still on. So not this time, we're good to go. And I'm just gonna place that just in from the edge. There's no amount that you need to, to do just wherever your eye seems to <laughs> like it. <laughs> Okay, and then I am going to flip this over and I'm going to pop this up with dimensionals. I like, I like a little pop in my cards. You do have to be a little bit careful sometimes uh, if they're going in the mail, 
that you don't have too many layers and dimensionals and pop things up too far. Um, not that you can't do that, you just need to be aware that sometimes then it may need extra postage, but a couple of layers of dimensionals I've never had a problem with. So, so we, we use them. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to put this onto here. And I've taken uh, some other pieces of the designer series paper and these little peppermint candies are all over in the designer series paper. So I've just uh, use the coordinating dies. If you look at the uh, gingerbread dies, there are a number of different size circles that you can use to cut out the peppermint candies. And so I've just cut some of those out. And uh, what have we got here? This is, we've got red, so we'll use a little green one just to mix things up a little bit. And I'm going to put some dimensionals onto these as well. If you have been following my emails, you will know that there is an awesome sale on that started today. Uh, the sale is on cardstock, ink pads, and dyes. So you can save 10% on cardstock. 15% uh, on ink pads and 20% on dyes. So it is just um, items from the annual catalog. It does not include the uh, fall mini catalog, but there are some awesome things that you can uh, get at great discounts. So this is a good time if you've been using up all of your a stash of products, getting ready for Christmas with cards and other uh, paper items, paper crafting items. It's a, a great time to replenish the stash. So um, that sale is on for only three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week. So you don't want to wait. You uh, want to get over to the store and make your purchase. So the $35 purchase that uh, you might be planning in order to get um, this, the tutorial and the kit for free. You can get even more items for your $35 now. And uh, that's, that's always a good thing in my books. I should mention also that if you uh, are placing an order and your order total is actually over $35 and goes over $60. In addition to the card kit, I will send you a free package of embellishments. So just a, an extra thank you for your order. And there you have it. Look at that one card already. They look yummy. <laughs> All righty. The second card, uh, we are going to move over to a little bit of the uh, pine tree punch. Here it is here. And this is uh, the painted Christmas designer series paper that we are using and some layering circle dies and the pine tree punch. And if you look, this tree actually uh, has a little pop up. So I have just used two trees. You could use two or you could use three, um, but at two, it will still lay very flat if you are mailing it. At three, it does start to get a little bit thicker, um, but it's your choice. So, okay, so I will bring in my cherry cobbler card base this time. And here is the one piece of the painted Christmas designer series paper. Lots of uh, wonderful Christmas colors and patterns in this package. But as you can see, there's also some uh, less traditional Christmas colors on some of the, the papers. So lots of variety in this package for your 
Christmas crafting. I just realized I don't have anything uh, to watch for comments. So let me just take a peek over here for a minute so I can see what, uh, what is going on here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so. All right, so there's our designer series paper. And then this is another piece of the designer series paper, a different one from the package. And I am just going to grab my pine tree punch and punch out a couple of Christmas trees. I'm gonna need to trim this off a little bit. I had punched, punched a Christmas tree on the end of that previously. So it was a little bit jagged and wouldn't go into the punch far enough, but this will work now, there we go. So there's my two Christmas trees. And then you just take these and fold them in half. Get your fingernail at the, the top of the tree there. You can get it started right in about the middle. Just give that a squish. And then the, <laughs> the trunk you want to fold in half as well. And the same thing with this one. Just get that started at the top. And the trunk here. And then the rest will fall into place. Sorry, you're kind of kind, kind of seeing mostly just my fingers, aren't you? Okay, I am going to bring in my uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. It's perfect for this sort of activity. Look at that, I've folded these backwards. Not that I couldn't do my tree this way, but there's not as much color. So I'm going to refold these <laughs> the other direction. Take two on the video. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, well. Uh, that this isn't an easy fix. Sometimes I mess up worse than this. So I guess I should be grateful that uh, I just had to fold my paper the other direction. And then you're just going to uh, put these two trees together like that. And they don't match exactly the, uh, the branches on either side are just a little bit different. If you look really closely, you can kind of see that there's just a little bit hard to see on the video, but there is just a little tiny bit um, of the, the back of the paper showing where that branch is just a little bit different. I didn't get my trunks together too well here. Maybe if I put a little bit more glue down here, I can kind of fix it. This is the, again, the, the test of working uh, on camera because it's out in front of me. My, my line of sight is not right over top. And sometimes it's hard to see whether I've got things lined up very well, but there we go, that's better. Okay, then I have a cherry cobbler uh, cut with the layering circle dies and a piece of basic white cut with the layering circle dies. And I'm just going to put the, I'm going to attach this. Do you do this too? I always, <laughs> plain white paper. I turn it to the back to put the adhesive on. <laughs> Don't ask me why, uh, but I do that with all of my <laughs> cardstock. I, you know, I, if I was going to do this one, I would turn it over. Now, sometimes with die cuts or punches, that's not a bad thing because uh, sometimes there's, just a little ridge at the edge of your cardstock if you've cut it with a die or a punch. If that is the case, if you just take your bone folder and run it off the edge, you will just flatten that little cut ridge and then it won't matter. There will not be a, a top or a bottom to your paper. So, hey, I've just found mistake number two. Uh, so I'll put this down here and then we'll talk about how I'm going to try and fix the other mistake that I made. 
I should keep that just a little bit lower. See, there's the advantage of liquid blue. But just a moment to play with its positioning. So there we go. So if you look at this and this, there is some of the very lovely uh, gold three eighths of an inch shimmer ribbon on this card. And there isn't on this card. So normally I like to uh, wrap my ribbon around the back and secure it. But since I messed that up, I guess we're going to go with just some cut, some angle cut edges on this. So I'm just gonna cut that on an angle and it will just sit there. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but it will work. I have the angles different. Does that matter? Maybe I should have done this. Maybe, oh, I still could do this. Maybe this card, I will make little, little chevron pieces. Okay, changing up this card completely and you can do it either way. I will give you uh, photos of both in the tutorial so you can choose which one you prefer. So now I'm just going to uh, fold this tree down a little bit and flatten this. I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back of this. And I never know exactly where I, I want things. So I sort of put it all over. I'm gonna cut this off a little bit. I don't need it quite this long. Okay. And then I'm going to put one of these pieces out here. And the other one right there. Should have been out the side a little bit. Let's let's try that again. See, you're catching me on the. I'm designing on the fly here. <laughs> do you ever do that? You make a mistake with something, and then you don't know what you're going to do, and then it takes you three tries to kind of figure it out. Let's see if we like that better. Does that look better? looks a little funny there, but I think on the card that will, will work better. Okay, see, we can save everything. <laughs> we just have to change our plans a little bit. So because I've added this just on the back uh, loosely like that, I'm going to put a couple of the dimensionals right over top of my ribbon and that will hold it securely in place just in case it missed the adhesive at all. Bring the card back in. And this time, because I've got this ribbon on here, I'm going to go towards the top a little bit with my circle. Okay, then I have my gilded gems for a nice gold tree topper. And I'm just going to take one of the biggest ones of these and put it right at the top of my tree. There we go. So a little bit different, give you some options. Yes, that was my plan all along. Give them options for how to put the cards together, Connie. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay, so consider it done. Options on which way to make this card. <laughs> All righty. The next card, uh, we are back to the gingerbread and peppermint suite. And uh, this is the card here. So we have uh, some designer series paper and some uh, pair, no, old olive cardstock strips. 
And then we have this lovely copper uh, die cut border. Again, this is from the gingerbread dies. There are 20 dies in this set. So you can do all sorts of things with it. So I have used this and it cuts out this lovely uh, garland hanging border kind of thing. Um, our ornaments are kind of anchored to it on this card, but you could use this for anything, just a, you know, just a strip on your card to uh, give it a little pizzazz or whatever you like. There's also all of these uh, dies that cut both an outline and detail. Okay. I really hope you're not hearing that other echo on, uh, on my other device. I don't know how to make it go away. The volume won't go all the way down. Drives me crazy. Technology again. So anyway, we are going to use the ornament and the um, bell, but only the, the outlines. So we're not using those details this time because we are stamping the ornaments. Okay, so basic white thick card base for this card. Give that a nice score there. Well, for a nice press on the score line. This this card base is done opposite to the other, so it's eleven inches by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. Um, okay, and then we have. Uh, the two pieces of old olive, and they go right near the edges. So, see, this is where I would normally go, oh, let's put some adhesive on there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just do it right here in place. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> okay, so we will just add some adhesive to this. And again, this doesn't have, um, you know, a real right or wrong distance that you need to be, but I'm going to put it close, close to the top and I'll do the other one close to the bottom so that there's just a little bit of basic white card base showing through. And then it's always a good idea to check it's not a whole lot of overhang, but just a tiny bit. And it's super easy just to take your paper snips and trim that little bit extra off so everything is totally even. Okay, there we go. After that, uh, you'll see that your designer series paper that I clearly forgot to trim to size. Uh, will fit right on there. So again, that's okay. We're just going to use our card base as the template when we put this together. So this one. I just need to plan where my <laughs> five and a half inches is, don't I? So that's right about here. Hopefully uh, that's where we where it is so that it will stick. I'll just put a little extra on here just in case I messed up on that part, which, you know, certainly possible. If I was making this on my own, I would probably stop and go trim it, but we're just going to go with the flow for now because we have this perfect little template on the back to size it exactly the way we want it. There we go. You would never know that I hadn't cut that exactly the way I wanted it before I even started. I will deny, deny, deny. So now I'm using just a little bit of this uh, liquid glue again. 
Okay, on really on the uh, it's hard to see where I got my glue here. I don't want too much as I've just done there. I should put it on my silicone mat and that way it won't matter if I have extra. There. Get a little bit along here. And again, this is longer than I need it, and that's fine. I will just cut the excess off after I get it adhered. Just notice there was still a couple of little pieces from the die cut. Comes off very well, but sometimes there's just some little tiny pieces left. So, just put this right at the edge here. And we're just going to put this right across the border of the two pieces of paper. And just get a nice press there. there Alrighty. So that is on there. And again, we can open it up here. Trim off this little excess. Here's why you need paper snips handy when you're crafting. Eh? The Stampin' Up! paper snips are so awesome. They're super sharp, nice and pointy on the tip, easy to use and maneuver. If you're into fussy cutting, <laughs> you appreciate uh, really good paper snips for doing that. Why does this, this looks, oh, it moved. That's why it looks totally uh, crooked. There we go. That's better. Okay, so we'll just set that aside for a moment because now we need to do some stamping. So we're going to use the frosted gingerbread uh, stamp set. You'll notice there are stamps here that coordinate with the dies. Uh, this is kind of similar, but it does not actually coordinate with the die. It's just a similar sort of pattern, but we aren't, aren't using that one today. So we will go ahead. So I have the ornament and the bell. I'm going to stamp the bell with old olive. I have this on my Stampin' Pierce mat because these are photopolymer. I want just a little bit of extra cushioning underneath. That's very busy to look out. Turn it over, it's a little bit cleaner on this side still. So we need two of the bells. in the old olive. Close this up. Get this clean on my stamping chamois. And then I'm going to bring in my real red ink and we will stamp the ornament. While I have my red ink out, I have a three quarter inch strip of basic white, and we are going to use that for the sentiment. I have Happy Holidays from the same stamp set, and I'm just going to stamp that down onto there. Oh, okay. Good. Close this up so nobody leans in that because the way today's been going, that would be me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Somebody 
things are just kind of like that, aren't they? Anyway, it's all good. Okay, so this is going to just have a little angle cut. There we go. And that is ready for our card. And then I'm going to bring in <laughs> my cute little toy. Look at this guy. This is the uh, mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. And if you saw the video that I did for this, uh, this is a fairly new toy for me. There it is, all closed up. Look at that. It's so little and cute. I love it. Anyway, I, uh, I didn't love it at first. I mean, I love the look of it and everything. But when I started using it, um, it is a little bit more difficult to roll through than the big stamp and cut and emboss machine. I will be honest. It, <laughs> I was not happy with how it was going at first, but I have learned a few little tricks. Um, some people have said, if you stagger your plates a little bit, so I don't know whether you can see that I have these just a little bit staggered that it would feed in a little bit better. Um, but last night, another demonstrator, uh, Tamara Bertram from out in Alberta was talking about it. And she said her trick is to just put it in on a little bit of an angle and it catches every single time. And I tried it last night and it does, and it's awesome. So that's what I'm going to suggest that if you just feed your plates through on a little bit of an angle that it will catch easily and roll smoothly and you'll be very happy with it. So I'm just gonna get that going. Now, I'm probably gonna shake the table a little bit, which means I'm going to shake the camera a little bit. I apologize, but I wanted you to see how well that works. <laughs> Whoop, whoa, <laughs> and out it goes. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to set this aside because I did do uh, some of these in advance. So I don't actually need to cut all of these out, but I just wanted to show you uh, the little mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and how easy it is to use when you know a little trick or two. <laughs> so, okay, and through the magic of getting ready before now. Uh, there we have two of the ornaments, or two of the bells and one of the ornaments. So we are ready to put the card together, the last pieces. So I have put the ornaments uh, on this card. I laid them flat so that they could tuck under these little pieces of the copper. So I'm just going to do that again. Other thing you probably want to do is just decide because I have this in a little, looks like a little different place. Maybe this will work. Let's just see. Kind of want to plan where you're headed with these. Yeah, I think that will work. Okay. And maybe it works out every time. I don't know. I don't really need two of these cards, but both times it's worked. So. <laughs> It's a good thing, I'm just gonna stick with that. So I've just tucked this under that little piece of copper uh, ever so slightly, just because it, one had to be on the top and one had to be on the bottom. So <laughs> it sort of seemed to make sense that this would be a garland that these were hanging from. So that's why I've tucked it under there. One in the middle. Just like that. Okay, and then because these are uh, perhaps still a little bit wet, I'm going to give it a nice rub on the back so that I don't move them this time the way I did with the garland earlier. There we go. Here's my happy holiday sentiment. I think I'm just going to trim a smidge off of this. <coughs> smidge, it's, it's uh, sort of like a, a titch or a beanie bit. 
they don't really mark those things on your ruler, but they exist. I'm sure. I'm sure you've you've cut a smidge off of a piece of cardstock at some point in your crafting. I said you can get the uh, tutorial and the kit with all of the pieces that you would need to complete these four cards just by placing a $35 order in my online store using this host code. And the tutorial will include photos of all of the cards along with measurements and uh, you know some sort of step-by-step -step directions. Well, probably not a lot of directions, but uh, you'll have the video <laughs> as well. So some directions and all the measurements, that's the main thing. So you can create lots and lots of these cards on your own. You can order anything you like from the store. And right now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, there is an awesome sale going on. You can save 10% on cardstock. 15% on ink pads and 20% on dyes. This is any of the items from the annual catalog. So there's uh, lots of things to choose from. Let's just pause for a moment and take a peek at some of the awesome dyes that you may want to consider. Um, the basic borders. They don't have a stamp set anyway, so they don't have bundle pricing. But right now, you can save 20% on those. Layering circles, we use them today. These are a staple. Everybody needs these. If you don't have these, you need to buy these. Buy these today <laughs> because you will use them all the time. The layering diorama, that's another fun one. Um, great shapes. Um, there's lots of... Uh, dies that are, are great shapes. Some of them do have stamp sets with them, uh, but this is a great time to pick up the dies. Perhaps you already have the stamp set and didn't get the dies. Picture this, these are fun dies. They cut out uh, rectangles and circles. So you have the negative to use, and then you also have those shapes that you can use. Stitched greenery, this is a beautiful die. I don't have it, but guess what I'm going to buy <laughs> today? <laughs> Stitched rectangles, that's another one that we use uh, an awful lot on things that we're, we're making. And on this card, we are going to use these. Stitch so sweetly. So these are um, awesome dies as well. Look at all those layers of um, dies that you can use to cut things out, as well as some other fun shapes you can use for sentiments and, and backgrounds and all sorts of things. So this is another great die set that you uh, you need. If you don't have it, you need it. And as I say, we are using it uh, for this card right here. So this is a little bit of a fancy fold. I guess I should show you the card. Uh, this one, we're using the Painted Christmas Designer Series paper and the Perfectly Clad stamp set again. And this one opens in a Z fold. So. Just a little bit of fun with that one. Okay. So, we're going colder. So, same uh, card base as last time. It's uh, 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I've scored here at five and a half. But on the front, there is an additional score line at two and three quarters, and I'm just going to fold that back onto itself. Burnish that so we have a nice crease. Well, and there is how we make the Z fold. Okay. So I can attach my uh, painted Christmas designer series paper. This doesn't really have an up or down, so I'll put it on that way. Thank you. 
centered and lined up. There we go. Okay. And then I have a piece of the basic white that I have cut with the uh, stitched so sweetly. Oh, sorry, I just, I have my perfectly planned stamp set somewhere oh, oh, with all my things. And, um, and I mounted the sentiment, but I did not mount the trees. So let's get some blocks going here. You're going to use uh, this stem outline, trunk and, trunk and branches, I guess is a little bit better. We're going to use the leaves that coordinate with that to fill it in. Sometimes I, I do just this for a, an interesting tree look, but today we're going to fill that in and we're going to use the evergreen one. And then we have also got some pine cone stamps that I've done down the edge and oh, just this little little tiny piece here. So maybe I will do this the other way around. There we go. I think we are set. So when I'm stamping uh, three images like this, I usually I start with the center one. I start with soft suede ink for my trunk and my branches, and I'm going to stamp this towards the top in the middle of this piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to just set that to the side for a moment, bring in my real red cardstock. And this one you can see will fit right over top of this. And you don't have to get it exactly uh, in line, it's in the area. So give you an artistic look. Okay. And then I have garden green for the other trees. Two of these a little bit lower and just to the edge. Finished. Oh, not quite finished with that. So I'll set this to the edge, bring the soft suede back in, and give these guys some trunks. Now, sometimes when I use this, I just do it like this, just like an evergreen right on the ground. Um, just perhaps you're not even using this at Christmas time and you just want some evergreens. So, um, that's an option, but these are Christmas trees, so we'll give them trunks. Okay, so there is that, and I'm going to bring in my card base. Oh, I have it, and my garden green. So I'm just going to add some pine cones along the edge of this. There we go. Okay, so let's move some of these things out of the way. While I'm stamping, um, I put a sentiment on the inside of this. So let me just do that right now as well with the real red ink. 
Let's make sure we do it right side up. <laughs> Don't know about you, but when I'm stamping uh, my sentiments on cards, I usually put them towards the top so I can just put some names at the top who I'm sending this to and then I have a little bit more room to write a, a, at least a small message. <laughs> Um, rather than putting it right in the center, which may be something um, you would tend to do. So, okay, so here is my real red die cut and my Christmas trays. I'm just going to I'm going to take a peek at this. Actually, I did. I attached the white to the red with some dimensionals. So we will do that again here. Here's the rest of my dimensionals. Here we go. Hope that you're enjoying these Christmas cards. They are, um, they're all relatively easy to replicate, but uh, if you would like to have the whole kit to make these cards, you can get a kit of all the pieces of uh, cardstock, designer series paper, all of the die cuts, everything that you need to make uh, these four cards. And I will send them all that all to you for free you place a $35 order in my online store using that host code that you see, see on the screen. And I'll put a link for all of that uh, on this post as well. You need to place your order by Sunday and then I will send the kits out by Monday and you will have them in time to get some crafting done and get some cards sent. Oops, okay. Oh, there we go. Now, this second piece of white that goes inside is the same size as uh, the real red. So what you're going to want to do is get it lined up. Definitely want some uh, <laughs> liquid glue for this so that you can move it around a little bit. And you'll notice my glue is not quite as far out as it might be sometimes. And I'm just going to, I don't remember the best way to do this. It's always a little bit tricky, but just sort of lay it in there. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a push so you don't see it. And then I'm going to give a light press and open this up because it's usually not quite straight, but we can fix it because it's liquid glue. <laughs> we have that little extra moment to move things around. And again, it's a handmade card. It does not need to be perfect, but that's pretty good. And it's so pretty straight. Okay, so look at that. That's how you get your inside in under your outside. <laughs> Bring in some clear rhinestones again for some tree toppers. And these are the largest size. Um, Grab them with your take your pick tool, and they're super easy to place right on top of all of your trees. Oh, and there you have it. There is the fourth card, a little bit of a fancy Z fold. Okay, so let's clear some of these things out of the way. I will bring the cards back in so we can see them all together. Or the one that I've lost. <laughs> Not really, it's right here. We're okay. Out of the way. You can see these things. Four cards. Four cards. Lots of fun, lots of crafting. 
let's put that little extra burnish to hold it down a little bit more. Huh? I hope you've enjoyed these cards and that uh, you will make some of them for yourself, for your, uh, your sending and all that. Uh, why can I not get this to come back to me? Oh dear, for some reason, it doesn't want to put this back up to me. Connie Douglas is the host, that's me. Oh, maybe I do it from here. See, here we go, look, I'm back. <laughs> Hey, I hope you've enjoyed the cards that we've made today. And I also hope that you will place an order in my online store. I would love to have you shop with me. And if your order is $35 uh, or higher, I will send you the whole kit to make these cards along with the full tutorial with all of the uh, pictures and measurements and everything that you need so that you can make lots and lots and lots of these cards if you wish to. If your order is over $60, I will also send you a free package of embellishments. So you can embellish your cards even more than uh, with what I've sent you, or you can use it on some other projects that you've got on the go. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I will see you next time. The next class, the third one and the final one that I'm doing in this series is on Monday, October 29th at 10 a.m. So hope to see you then. And until then, happy crafting. Bye for now.